Spring is in the air, and for the Cajun parish of Lafourche, Louisiana, that means that it's time to bless the fleet, ensuring a bountiful harvest and a safe year at sea. But there's a cloud hanging over the Gulf of Mexico that's endangering not only the fleet, but life in the sea itself. For generations, the Cajun people have passed down shrimping as a way of life. But one of the most dangerous jobs in America is getting more dangerous, as boats must venture further out into the Gulf to catch the fish that are fleeing from the dead zone. When you, when you drag the bottom, we have a little test net. That's the first thing that tells us what's on the bottom. You, you go right there, you pull your little test net, and it's like, there's nothing in it. There's nothing in it, no fish, there's just clean bottom. Uh, we'd be working, everything be going good, and one day, all of a sudden, there's, there's nothing. Every, everywhere the boats go, they pick up the nets, there's nothing left in them. Fish, shrimp, everything died. Community activist and chemist Wilma Subra was one of the first scientists to record what is now a 20,000 square kilometer dead zone in the Gulf of Mexico, caused by the polluted waters of the Mississippi River. I was part of a research consortium that was looking at the impacts of drilling and production. And when we did the offshore monitoring around a couple of the rigs off there, we found that it had high nitrogen, high phosphorus content. And when we put the data package down, we saw that it had little or no dissolved oxygen. In the Midwest, they're in the business of growing crops to feed the world. Mm -hmm. and, and as a result of that, the nutrients that run off the crops are coming down and having a huge impact in the Gulf of Mexico. Marine scientist Nancy Rabelais' work on hypoxia in the Gulf of Mexico has raised public awareness of this critical issue, and she has become a leading voice for action in the halls of power. The main factor, of course, is the fresh water from the Mississippi River. And because it's lighter than seawater, which is saltier and denser, heavier, it forms a, a layer. And then in the summer, the sun also makes that layer lighter. So there's a, there's a two-layer system. And then the other factor is there's just way too many nutrients and too much of this phytoplankton growth that sinks to the bottom. And once that starts decaying, then it sucks all the oxygen out of the lower water column. When you get down into it, it's just void of life. You don't see fish swimming around. You see dead animals on the bottom. Um, so it, it really, on the bottom, it really does look dead. You just don't see any activity at all. The nature of a dead zone is best understood by the Cajun shrimp fishermen of Louisiana, who make their livelihoods on and from the sea. It's a down, hollow feeling, especially when you've gone out there to try to catch something that you know was there and always was there and it ain't there and you can't find it. Man, I think me, you, uh, all over the world right now you got polluted water. You see that on television, you know. The ditches and bayous and dead water, you know. That lives in it. Polluted. And I guess some of that stuff gets in the river, comes in the Gulf. Despite several decades of study and advocacy by people like Wilma and Nancy, in the summer of 2008, the dead zone was the second largest on record. The flow of nitrogen down the Mississippi River continues to increase as consecutive governments fail to address the conflict between the value of large-scale farming and that of fishing. You have to understand when you go up to the Midwest states, they could care less what's happening to the Gulf of Mexico. That's something far away that they never see, that they never acknowledge. Their emphasis is growing crops. So it's really hard to say, we've had an emergency down here, we really need you to stop putting so much fertilizer on. They make their, they make their living growing the crops that we eat. We would hope in turn they would eat the crop. That's a crop to us, you know, they, they're taking away our livelihood. For the fishermen, the day is in sight when their empty nets will be raised for a final time.
And when you're a fisherman, you're always supposed to be fishing in the season. You're never supposed to be home, it's your season. And you'd see somebody at Walmart and they'd say, why are you not fishing? Why not out fishing? Well, I just came in, I'm off. They don't ask you that question no more. They see you, they say, you're still fishing? You're still trawling? You can still make a living out of it? And I look at them and says, yeah. I don't explain that no more. I said, yes, we're still making a living at it. Still hanging on that edge. We used to have eight shrimp companies on this island. I'm the last one left. We had five generations in here. I don't know if we're gonna make six, you know. To stop putting that stuff in the water. <laughs> so whatever they're putting in the water, to stop putting it in the water. Yeah. I would imagine, yeah. Stop the pollution in the water. Stop the pollution in the water. That would be it. Uh, I was a shrimp all my life. And uh, years ago, you never heard about dead some. The dead zone is endangering the livelihoods of the Cajun people, but with over 400 dead zones growing around the world, this issue is confronting people everywhere. Ultimately, our lifestyle choices are the key to solving this crisis, and it's time to take action.